Richard Canch, lovely to see you, Gunroom TV. Nice to meet you. Mate, you're not known as Richard, are you? you no, absolutely not. You are, now, we've just been giggling about this, the fact that Uncle Fester, okay? Yeah, absolutely. We, we know he's Uncle Fester, everybody knows you in the gun trade as Uncle Fester. Yeah. Now, we had a bit of a fun that the millennials, they yeah. are. They probably what wouldn't is? know who Uncle Fester is. If we, <laughs> it's probably not reached them yet, they don't watch the old films. And yeah, but, it, but that's retro now, not isn't on it? YouTube. <laughs> Why is it that old? Yeah. Ho hopefully, you never know. It might get on YouTube next to this, uh, and then they'll this, actually yeah. know who Uncle Fester is. But then they're going to sit when they when they come and see you at Goodfellas, they're going to sit around and go, "Oh no, yeah. I recognise you." Yeah, I usually who stand is. there with a light bulb in my mouth, <laughs> and then they'll, and then they'll get it. So who's cousin it? <laughs> That's got to be Neil Brooklyn. <laughs> he has to be the cousin no, it yeah. today. <laughs> Is that with the free beer? Yeah, well, he's one of the only people we know with hair as well. So. And I, whoa, whoa, that, that's getting hairy, mate. You yeah, know that. Uh, hair ass. Hair ass, totally. Yeah, yeah. No, obviously, good fellow. It's been around a long time. I knew you when I felt. When we, do you remember? Now, this is the thing which makes you yep. giggle. Do you remember the shoot at Froome in the quarry? Yep. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, that was like one of those memorable shoots that it is iconic. Yep. It was legendary. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who was ever there was part of a one-off shoot, Absolutely. which was to blew everybody's minds, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess with with Froome, and you know, I've shot with Froome for a number of years. I'm actually a life member of. Froome. Yeah. Um, we've all we've always tried to do something different. Always tried to think out of the box. Always tried to make it fun. Um, you know, I, I remember stages. You know, I mean, they famously ran the three gun at Shield. And you know we've had stages where you've sat on the toilet, we've, uh, you know, and we've, we've shipped a toilet that, in. That a proper popped toilet. up the other day on my memories. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, we've been stood on skateboards. We've, yeah. You know, we've done sitting in boats. We've done. Yeah, loads I remember those. Yeah. The years. Laying in laying in bed with the covers over you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Because pra practical shooting always used to be practical. Yeah. So it always used to be about that that practical scenario of. And there used to be almost a written scenario around most of the stages, um, and we and we try to, to keep that alive as long as possible. Um, and, and I understand where it's where it's going now because um, you know the, the the sport is evolving and it's it's moving on for, moving forward. And we're trying to get things like Olympic accreditation, totally. etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know those things don't fit. They're not repeatable. They're not you know that that standard approach. So I, I understand that, but it. You know, it was a real lot of fun when it was, you know, it was it was almost we like seven and a half, really. But the thing is, now things have changed. And now the biggest change to that is, sadly, we don't have S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore. No. And it's left a big void in the shooting in, on the, in the ranges. Now, in the southwest, yeah. where can we go? We've got Dartford and Kent. Yeah. We've got um, two rivers potentially down in uh, Devon. Yeah. It's nothing in Cornwall properly. John at Two it's, Rivers is always worth a visit, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Normally, they have beer as prizes. So, so, so when John, are we going down? John is really good at beer and wine and <laughs> bottles of spirits and prizes. Yeah, on a range with firearms. Awesome. To, to, to <laughs> now, Fester, one of the things, obviously, gun, uh, good fellows are obviously being, you know, gun fellows, good fellows. The, yeah. you, you've been around a long time in the industry, and I remember when you were yeah. starting up, you were, you were giving everybody business cards and yeah, stickers yeah. and stuff. And this was a good few years ago now, and you've moved on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've moved on to actually coming out every year, you come out with this completely abstract gun, which always creates yeah. a bit of stir on social media. Yeah, some bonkers so, builds. Do you, want, do you want to take us through what you've got here and what they? Well, which um, one? So, if we start with probably the, I'll, I'll say you start with the Ruger. Um, it's not really a Ruger. So, it's a um, Rimfire Magic receiver from yeah. Roger Francis. But then uh, I've machined the top off to take the Seymour. Um, Bob Portson, 12 and, I think they're, they're a 12 and a half inch barrel, but I think they actually measure about 12.375 for some crazy American reason. Um, Boyd Stock, uh, TR2000, Bob Portson Trigger. And I built this really for Ely Steel Challenge. Right. Um, and purely because anybody who's anybody in the Steel Challenge world shoots a Ruger-based gun. Do, correct, yeah. So I wanted to work out why they were shooting a Ruger-based gun as opposed to an AR platform that almost everybody here is shooting. Um, and the answer really is, it's just more pointable. It's a much more pointable, it's much more intuitive as you point it. You can get the optics a lot lower. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you think you're shooting a, a six or an eight inch play, 
anything with uh, the farther you are above the ball with the sighting system, the closer you get, the more margin of error you've got. And most ARs, the the, the sighting system's quite a, a way off the ball. High, totally, yeah, so yeah. you know you've got a, you've got a smaller margin of error. Um, I think the steel challenge lends itself well to the standard ten round Ruger Max. Um, and, and it just it just feels a little bit better. I think. And I think that and that's what you're doing. You've you've taken a solution. You've made it fit yeah. to what people are looking for. Yeah. And that's that's an important thing. And instead of just taking a bolt gun and try, trying to make a square peg fit in a round hole, yeah. this is making a, a square peg fit in a square hole. And I mean, it, it, it's it's been good actually because I mean, I suppose um, when uh, we lost the pistols. This was our roots. Yeah. You know, this is where we all went. Um, I mean, I was lucky. I actually had a Ruger 1022 in a Butler Creek stock that was the first firearm I ever bought. Um, and I bought it because I was a big 18 fan um, and couldn't really afford a Mini 14. Many of you would have seen that. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> So I bought a 1022 with a folding stock, yeah. just like the 18s in stainless. Oh, the face um, used to use it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I, and I started to started to shoot that when we lost the pistol, and it soon evolved into these. You know, the the Volcourts and carbon barrels game. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a stock very similar to this um, by a company called Zero Sharp, um, and it was the first one in the country. Mm. I mean, I, I had off of Roger Francis the very first Volcourts and rifle that came in the country. That was my one. Right. Um, so you know this this was this was where we were. This was this is what we had. I mean, we've done some changes to the to the action as well. So um, I've never cleaned the barrel on the two two, and there's this whole train of thought of do you clean the two two barrel? Yeah. Don't you clean the two two barrel? Um, I've always been the the never clean, the clean the chamber, never clean the barrel. Um, and with this, I've 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 changed. I thought I'm gonna gonna give it a go the other way. So I've actually put a hole in the back of the receiver so that you can rod from the correct way because the problem is you should never rod from the correct you always weigh the way the bullet goes yeah so um you know i'm just just trying that as well i don't think it really makes a lot of difference to be fair i've not not seen a massive amount of difference other than the fact i've got to clean it um and there's <laughs> well, another one labor in it yeah so kind of that was that was this one and then i suppose you know modern the modern way we see is the ar so everything's gone ar wise I mean, you know, we were we were one of the first to start tricking out the M and P fifteen twenty two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is a base Chris Defiance. Um, using the Chris as well because I think if you go to a metal AR platform, um, and being an engineer myself, I just think the Chris is the best made. They are making a massive. Uh, they're coming up fast. And Look. the other thing I really like with Chris is they had some problems initially with firing pins and the bolt hold open latches breaking mm -hmm. um, and the designer from Chris, the designer's rifle, um, senior person in Chris, came straight onto the Facebook forums, said we're really sorry, there's spares sent out to the distributors, please contact them and we'll exchange them for free. It's not bad customer service is it? Well no, I mean, you know what, you're not going to get that from, you know, any of the other manufacturers, you know, it's very, very rare. You know, um, Mike, the designer of this rifle, um, I've spoken to several times at SHOT Show. Um, I'm good friends with him on Facebook, etc. cetera, now. Um, and, and one of the reasons for that is because, as gunfellas, we're, we're the first to really start to modify these rifles uh, in a different way. So, for example, this one not only has got a Volkwurz and carbon barrel in it, which Chris will tell you themselves don't fit in a Chris Defiance. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> I've had several but. other dealers come to me and say, um, I've got one, can you get it to work? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, these work really, really well. There's Good. a couple out there on the circuit now. Um, there was one being shot the other week at Ely Steel, Steel Challenge. Nice. Um, we do them with a 16 inch barrel. This one's got a 16 inch uh, barrel with no, uh, no pepper pot on the end. Um, I can do them with the pepper pot at 16 inch. And I do the 12 inch version in it as well. Um, the 12 inch version is quite cool because it finishes inside, just literally yeah. just inside the, the hand guard. Um, and they do make a massive weight difference to it yeah. as well. Um, so, I mean, this this one is probably about as far as you can go. It's got I was going to say, um, you've tricked absolutely everything on it, haven't you? So, do you want to oh, take yeah. us what you've got on it? So, it's got it's got quarter turn um, timber, timber lake safety. It's got a Timney Calvin Elite trigger, 
So the, the Calvin League triggers are the first um, properly manufactured trigger aimed at 2-2 two, two as well as 4-ball. Yep. So absolutely no light strikes ever with a, with a Calvin Elite. Pound and a quarter, pull, three trigger shoes. Um, you know, it's, it's adjustable for length. Um, you can count it. So really, 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 really good trigger. It's got a Tony Systems battery assist on it to, to just help with, uh, with locking it back and, and putting it open. Um, extended mag release. Um, then it's got a Shield RMS, uh, US optic scope, mm -hmm. worn mounts. Um, so it is about as far as you could go, you know. It, well, the one extra I put. can see you've got on there is you've obviously got the Raptor style charging handle, both left and right. Yeah, isn't left it? and right. Yeah. 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 Um, these uh, these charging handles, like we actually have these manufactured in the US. Okay. So. Um, uh, I, I've got a manufacturer of a lot of parts now for AR, so um, we sell all of the ident springs, all of the internal parts, we've got all of those, um, and we have all those manufactured for gun fellas in, in the US, um, so that, you know, invariably you'll, you'll lose bits and, and you know, sp springs ping. Spares. And, yeah, <laughs> so we've got all the spares for them. We also do the extended body pins as well, so you can just pull them, you don't have to, uh, you know, fashion with an Allen key or you know all the other sorts of things um, and then this one's got quite an unusual magwell on it it's different um, with uh, incorporating the skull um, for no other reason than um, I guess in the past years uh, all the, in fact all the way since I started building the Rugers I've always gone for the colors yeah. um, I was really involved with the start of practical shotgun and we used to shoot practical shotgun in the tunnel at Devices um, inside, you know, mm -hmm. in, indoor practical shotgun. Um, and at that point, the, the UK PSA weren't involved and the pistol shooters in UK PSA, as we've always been in shooting, we're always divided. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't like the shotgun, didn't think it was going the right way. So we started painting our, um, it was only 1100s then, Remington I mean, Raymond. We started yeah. painting Larry Colors. Um, I had a blue one with flames on um, Just purely because we, we, we wanted to get away from that black gun. We wanted to show that totally. it was a fun sport yeah. for everybody. You know, it's a family sport. And, and I suppose I've carried that through. And, and you know, to, to me, um, I built a few custom motorbikes as well. So skulls are timeless. You know, we've even got, we even, I don't know if anybody, if you can see it on the camera, but we've even got a smiley skull on that side, just to, <laughs> just just to prove that we're fun, so it's not all sinister. Um, and yeah, it, it, just make, it just makes a challenge, you know? Yeah. I like the red, white and blue, it's a bit more patriotic. Of you course. Know, I'd like to, like to think that, that there's a lot of things out there that we support. Certainly with Gunfellas, we like to support our troops, you know, we, we do give to charity every year and, and yeah. you know, we've just, uh, I've just done some work with a local ice hockey team actually on a poppy appeal shirt and we sponsored that and, and, and put some money for that as well. So um, yeah, it's just, just something different, Where, a bit more fun. If people wanted to come and look at obviously what you've got, you're here at obviously yep. the tactical show, uh, or the target show, you're here obviously to look at um, and present obviously your airsoft as well. Yep. Where do guys come to on with regards to social media? As, as social media, about? yeah, come find us, gunfellas.co.uk, okay. gunfellas on Facebook, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll find us everywhere. You, you will we find, find you. Speak you to anybody know. in shooting, really, and, and they kind of know me if they don't know the company. You're, I think you're probably one of the characters of the sport, yeah. and everybody does know you, mate. Well, and we, and we do everything, you know. I, like I say, I, you know, I, I build custom block airsoft guns as well. Um, you know, I, I think airsoft is, is a really important um, generation. You know, as shooters, if you look at the average age of the club, we're getting older and older. So I think that that involving airsoft more and getting the youngsters into it will then lead into them becoming good shooters and progressing our sport. Um, and, and I think that's you know that's hugely important to us. Well, do you know, Fester, I can, on behalf of Gunner and TV, I cannot thank you enough. It's been a long no time Thanks coming getting much, you sir. here, mate. But yeah, no we've got you off the stand. We've got you here. We've got you talking about it. And let's make 2020 even better, mate. It's great to sit in the gun room chair. Thank Hell you Hell yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Take care. Bye, Richard.